We are looking at one of the most incredible custom 1911s on the planet. We're going to take a trip to the man's shop who made this gun from scratch. He makes them one at a time. Bernie from CSC Arms. He's a good friend of mine. And I got to say, Bernie's going to have a huge name just like a Les Bear does right now, our beloved friend Les Bear. And in this video, we're going to go to his shop and we're going to see exactly um, what he does to make one of these custom 1911s. It's, it's just gorgeous. I, I, I bought this and uh, it's number 15, serial number 15. He's got serial numbers of 1 through 10 himself and a couple of guys beat me for 11, 12, 13, and 14. I wanted number 11. But I tell you what, these are going to be worth some money. And let me show you the other side right now then we're going to go to the shop. Here's a nice close look at the other side. And Bernie really puts a lot of attention to detail into his 1911s. You can even see on the slide there, it's got different types of serrations. Very interesting. And when we go to the shop, he's going to talk to you about what he does personally to make his 19, custom 1911s different than other custom 1911s. I'll let him explain it himself. But it, it was very impressive, and I'm very impressed with it. That's why I bought this gun. And I just show Bernie some love because he's, he's like an artist who just been working on something for 50 hours. He puts these things out of one at a time and then when it's unveiled to the public, he, uh, he should be proud of this gun. And we're, we're proud to take a look at it. And if you want to give Bernie some business, his website's below. Let's go to his shop. Welcome to WeaponsEducation.com. Here we are with the man himself, Bernie, CSC Arms. Thank you so much for making this gun for me personally, and I really see you becoming one of the biggest manufacturers of custom 1911s in the world. Like I said, this is gonna be a true educational video on what goes in to a custom 1911 and some of the differences. Bernie's very articulate, and he's gonna do a real good job. I think you'll love this. Bernie, I'm gonna turn it over to you what goes into making a custom 1911? We have a completed one here on the left, mine, and then we also have one that's broken down that you're about to work on and custom build. Why don't you just go ahead and tell us all about what goes into making a custom 1911? Well, first off, there's a lot of man hours doing a custom gun. And, uh, you know, a big difference when we talk about a manufactured gun and a custom gun. A custom gun with the tolerances, um, everything has to be hand filed, calibrated, and that's what you're going to get in your accuracy. Um, even down to a match grade barrel, um, everything is, is, is fitted properly. Um, the, the lugs and the hood of the barrel um, for tight tolerances to give you your accuracy. Um, Let's start off with the fit of the of the slide to the frame and okay. once you put it in here in front of the white here and yeah. sh show us this is how your frame comes out of the cnc machine well, correct yeah first off this is a, a forge uh steel uh, out of a bar stock steel uh, off the cnc uh, and you can see here it's checkered 30 lines per inch um and the slide and our slides are flat topped now when I'm explain it, that flat top what worry i'm gonna stop you a couple times here which i find extremely interesting Compared to uh, here, I have uh, an Ed Brown here. Show the difference in the, the top of each slide. Well, you can see the Ed Brown is, is actually a round top, and this is a flat top. Right, and what's the benefit of the flat top? The flat top, uh, your, your, your sighting is, is lower, so it actually gives you your sights, it, it preps the sights up higher, so it, it's a better sight uh, sighting in for I agree. into the target. Well, let's talk about the slide and, and the frame and how, how it comes and let's yeah. see how it fits there. It's not going to fit you too well. See this the, is one you haven't worked on yet. Yeah, this is, this is one straight out of the machine um, and your slide, you can see the rails are oversized. And, so uh, and I can show you here, happen? see how it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. Now and this one you worked on? Yeah, and, then, and the reason being, every gunsmith wants it oversized. You, so you, when you file and, and calibrate, you get it to precise fitment to uh, a, a tight uh, slide to frame fit on your on your slide and here's one that a uh, gun that I just finished okay. uh, is ready for getting sandblasting and, and, and coating to look like that so how does that Final, slide fit on that frame and we could show you here and you did it all, all by yourself yeah you could see all the, the the filing marks and it's not just just filing you have to calibrate on the caliber 
um, your, your precise measurements. So you actually file a little bit, check your measurement. File a little bit, check your me measurement. Um, I've been doing this 13 years, and you could over file something and you know mess everything up. And but how you does that right now? It's tight as a clam, huh? Yeah. Silky smooth. How about the sights and how they fit on the slide? What do you got to do? Yeah, the other thing is too, here, here, these sights are actually fitted on, on the slide. And what type of sights are they? Um, Meprolite, night sights. Very good. Night yeah, sights. Very good. And um, you actually have to file, hand file, you, 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 you calibrate your sight measurement because every sight has a different uh, uh, measurement. So then you actually file the slide to fit on the uh, sight. Okay, and what about the barrel bushings? Okay, here's here's the other thing. There's there's quite a bit of uh, work gets done on 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 slides, especially my slides. Um, the bushing uh, comes oversized, and you have to fit the bushing to actually fit on on the slide. And how do you do that? How do you physically do that? You, you have to file. Um, I I use a Dremel inside the uh, the slide. You can see there that the, the, that's the markings. And just to give you a you know fact here, here's the one that's not worked on. And you see it doesn't even fit. I got you. That's a good see? example. And you want the, 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 the bushing to be tight because that's what's going to give you your, your battery lockup and your, 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 uh, your accuracy. Great. We're learning a lot here. How about, how about the barrel itself and how you fit that to the slide? Okay. The barrel gets quite a bit of work and most of the barrels won't, won't even fit inside the slide. So it has to have, you know, it's clearance issues. Um, to, to actually fit and you saw when I was going in there it went right into right into battery so See, what did locks. you do to make that so perfect okay well the barrels match grade yeah this, this is a, uh, a stainless match grade barrel 45 calibrated um, the lugs inside or oversized or the fitment and also the barrel hood could have uh, uh, extra material on that so you have to file to get your precise uh, engagement on in, in the barrel to actually fit okay, and lock up in the barrel. What about the smooth edges on the slide? Is the finished product? Yeah, beautiful. Here, here, here is. I'm going to show you. When it comes off the machine, the machine you know doesn't smooth out the edges. And here's one, and you could see you, the edges. You know, so um, you actually take a file and just kind of clean up the edges. And you can see around here. What is it? What do you mean? The, the barrel to hood. What, what do you got to do for that? Here's your the barrel hood, and that was when I was saying. Uh, sometimes there's always you have to calibrate. I don't have uh, my measurements in front of me, but you have to calibrate what what your size fitment is from your I hood understand. or your slide. Yep. Now the trigger is really special on this. Explain that trigger and how it differs. For, for instance, well, most 1911s. Yeah. And uh, the rounded trigger and your yeah, curved trigger compared to a flat trigger and we, we talked about this and uh, before I started doing my guns I was telling you you got to get a flat trigger right Tom yep. so the cool thing about a flat trigger and I'm a big fan of flat triggers you get positive engagement wherever you grab the trigger uh, so the trigger actually uh, you, the movement when it goes back and forth it's getting the same uh, uh, positive uh, movement that's from back and three forth. and a half pounds a true three and a half pounds yeah that's the trigger work that I actually do on this uh, on the sear and the hammer um, to get you have to file stone and file and stone how and long does that take yeah uh, I have about four or five hours just doing trigger work just doing trigger work and then you have to put it on the gauge to make your make sure you have true three and a half pound trigger work how about the uh, the mag release let's talk about that yeah I use uh, extended mag releases so when you actually uh, grab the gun and, and your, your mm -hmm. thumb, you could actually uh, have a quick mag release. Um, and you can see here, there's some work done to the, to the mag release as for filing. Manually. Because, yeah, because none of them actually fit. This one's actually fitted in here. And also on the mag release, they come oversized for a reason. And then when you, you have to test it to make sure that when, it, when, it, when it's fitted, when you push the button, it's going to pop right out. You never want to have a 1911 and you've got to kind of like, you know, uh, have jagged edges. It should just fall right out. That's what a custom gun you're paying for. What about the ejector? The ejector has to be also uh, installed and has to be tuned because um, you want the proper uh, injection of the, of the bullets. And that has to be filed and I have a certain measurements that how it has to be the angles to be tuned where the... Uh, 
the rounds should be ejected. A lot of work. What about the thumb safety? The, the thumb safety is right here. And the thumb safety, you can see how it's filed. Um, this, this thumb safety here is a tactical thumb safety. And uh, they come oversized for a reason. And the channel is oversized, and you can see there. So once it's... So if you file too much, oh, you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one has this, this pin in here. But you, you can see here, it's supposed to fall in nice and smooth and go engage back and forth. And this here has to be filed enough that it gives enough room for the sear to lock in place when it goes into uh, into safe. The uh -huh. other the other thing is too that I also never want the uh, sa uh, the safety to ever rub on the frame. And you see on low end guns or entry level guns, you'll see a lot of scrape marks. When you buy a, a custom gun, you don't want to see that. So I actually go back and I file areas that that might be rough on the frame. So when it We'll never have any... Nice. What about the grip safety? The grip safety, that's another interesting thing. All the grip safeties are oversized, and you can see here... In the, be in the beginning, they're oversized. Yeah, and... And then ultimately, what's, yeah, what's your goal? Y you have to file and make sure, because once it's oversized, you can't uh, engage the trigger. So you have to file enough that you actually have... It, it actually function and, and, and work correctly. Then the other thing is, too, on custom guns, and you can see here, on this one here... Um, you have to fit the grip safety and you have to blend it, you know, and when you blend it, because they come oversized, and you can see here all the work that's been done on this gun, and you blend it smooth um, to give that custom look. How about the extractor? The extractor, uh, I'm a big fan of EGW, uh, in my opinion they make the best abstractors. Um, the extractor has to be um, also tuned um, to, to grab the round and uh, I have a tool that actually uh, tunes the extractor. And then if you want to show the, the customers out there the rear... The uh, restorations to prevent the glare. And you did that by hand. Yep. Just trying to get a good look at that in the yeah, light. You could, you could hold it there. Yeah, you did that by hand. And I'll here's, I'll here's show a slide that doesn't better. have the serrations. Yeah, I'll show this at home at the studio. And you did that with serrations by hand. Yep. And that, that, that reduces glare, like if you're in a bright, shiny day sure. and you're actually... Uh, let's talk about the cut and recessed barrel. I find yeah. that really interesting. That's, and, that's one of my uh, right specialties. Um, I've done them in, with a Rock Island. Remember, we did a video before. Just compare these two real quick. Mm -hmm. it, this is close to uh, $2,700, I think. I forget what that one cost. That is brown. Uh, yeah, I think Something it's twenty-five like or 2700 It's the Special Forces. But show the difference in the right here at the edge. Okay, you see here most of the government barrels uh, come standard, and they they protrude further than the bushing. And you see here your bushing. For yes. Some people that don't know, um, I go a step further so, and see that yours is flush, mm -hmm. so it's cut. Yeah, I I do it on a lathe and I cut it flush. Reason being, if the gun ever drops, and it, it'll never damage the barrel. And you have a very expensive barrel here, it's a three three hundred dollar barrel. So um, I cut them flush. And then I deep dish crown them. I don't know if you can see that really well. Yeah, I'll show that in the studio, but that is really sweet looking. And, and that polished. might help with some gases, right? Yeah, that actually helps for accuracy. That's good. Bernie, I'm gonna insert this right now. Please let's talk about the special finish on your gun, the Cerakoting finish, and what you gotta do to make it so it's it's not a blued finish. Explain it, it's, go ahead. There's a difference between bluing, bluing the steel, because the steel finish, you have to finish it or else it'll rust. So some, guy, some guys actually blew it, uh, you could uh, paint it. Um, I use a process called Cerakoting. Uh, it's a ceramic base uh, paint and it's baked on. Um, it's uh, great for uh, corrosion resistance um, and for wear. A lot of guys when they blew a gun they complain a uh, holster wear or they, the bluing doesn't last. Um, so I'm a big fan of Cerakoting. Okay, so here's a frame right here. This is a frame, you know, I finished a gun, uh, you, I take the frame. And carry it over here uh -huh. and show us what you do. Uh -huh. Sorry. And then I, this is my sandblasting uh, cabinet. You, I, it goes in here and I blast the finish, make sure I get all the impurities, uh, or any kind of um, grease or oil or any kind of, uh, uh, from filing the metal. So it has to be a fresh finish. Then I go ahead and paint it and then it gets baked. Uh, and then my then you come back when it's actually the finish is actually on 
and do the final assembly. Let's take a look at the final finish here and, and then mm -hmm. talk about it one more second because it really is a beautiful finish. Mm -hmm. And here, here's a gun. I, I can tell you right now, it's not gonna, that's not gonna scratch easy. It's not gonna, no, it's, it's, it's not it's, gonna blemish. I, I have a camera on me. I can show you. My, my, the bluing's already off of it, and it's, it's only a year old, just from carrying mm -hmm. it from holster wear. Mm -hmm. uh, Cerakoting is, is, and you could look it up on uh, uh, their own website. It's Cerakoting uh, Custom Coating, and uh, a lot of uh, manufacturers use it. And actually, I told you, Sig uh, has one of their models. They use Cerakoting. It's a great finish. It, it's the highest and in, in, in for wear and um great i wanted to just insert that little portion right there thank you uh, what else do you want to talk about here really interesting on how you custom make these 1911s trigger work very very perfect three to three and a half pounds just a lot of hand hand work and tight tolerances to come up with this finished product yeah. you honestly have 40 to 50 hours 40 hours yeah 40 minimal. man hours um in, in, in building a gun and we've had conversations about you know why these guns cost three thousand dollars you know m not my particular gun but uh, these big name guys they, they they have priced at that the reason being is there's a lot of work to do a, these guns and your price point is going to start at two thousand dollars start at two thousand dollars well you did a great job I'm going to talk more about this in the future. Bernie, thank you so much. You did thank an you, excellent Tom. job. You thank you for coming in. You're very talented. Very talented. Thank you. Checking out. Good job.